Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering colleges panic as states eliminate diversity initiatives nationwide. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the Associated Press, Republican lawmakers are backing dozens of bills targeting diversity efforts on campus and elsewhere. It's happening throughout the country. And from Yahoo News, GOP Kentucky House votes to defund diversity, equity, and inclusion offices at public universities. Also from the Associated Press, Alabama Republicans push through anti-diversity, equity, and inclusion bill and absentee ballot limits. So it's going to be a little more difficult to cheat in those elections. From WISTV.com, Bill takes aim at diversity initiatives on South Carolina college campuses. From the Associated Press, Republican lawmakers are backing dozens of bills targeting diversity efforts on campus and elsewhere. Diversity initiatives would be defunded or banned from universities and other public institutions under a slate of bills pending in Republican-led legislatures, with some lawmakers counting on the issue resonating with voters in this election year. Already this year, Republican lawmakers have proposed about 50 bills in 20 states that would restrict initiatives on diversity, equity, and inclusion, known as DEI, or require their public disclosure according to an Associated Press analysis using the bill tracking software Plural. This is the second year Republican-led state governments have targeted DEI. This year's bills, as well as executive orders and internal agency directives, again focus heavily on higher education. But the legislation also would limit DEI in K-12 schools, state government, contracting, and pension investments. Some bills would bar financial institutions from discriminating against those who refuse to participate in DEI programs. Meanwhile, Democrats have filed about two dozen bills in 11 states that would require or promote DEI initiatives. The bills cover a broad spectrum, including measures to reverse Florida's recent ban on DEI in higher education, and measures to require DEI considerations in K-12 schools curriculum in Washington state. Just the fact that they would push this on kindergartners, who could ever support those people? The Supreme Court's June decision ending affirmative action at universities has created a new legal landscape around diversity programs in the workplace and civil society. But DEI's emergence as a political rallying cry has its roots on campus, with Republican opponents saying the programs are discriminatory and promote left-wing ideology. Democrat supporters say the programs are necessary for ensuring institutions meet the needs of increasingly diverse student populations. No, you can't discriminate against people just because it suits your ideology. It's not legal in the United States. Republican Oklahoma Senator Rob Standridge, who has authored four bills aiming to hollow out DEI programs in his state, said it has become a salient campaign theme. Quote, I think it's become more of a political thing, Standridge said. In other words, people are using it in their campaigns in a positive way. So now, all of a sudden, maybe the people that didn't care before are like, well, wait a minute, I can use this on a flyer next year. And Trump brings it to light, too. The organizations that help power the conservative agenda say DEI's emergence at the center of political debate makes their crusade against it ripe for expansion. Quote, this has opened a window of opportunity and we don't want the window to close. A fellow at powerful conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation, said in an interview, We want to meet this window with a robust policy agenda. In South Carolina, Representative Josiah Magnuson, who introduced legislation to restrict DEI, said the issue reflects a growing sentiment among Republican lawmakers that ideologies disfavored by conservatives grow with the help of campus bureaucracies. But we're finding that our colleges and universities were kind of off the rails, and we need to rein them back in, Magnuson said. Quote, and so I think that's another thing that's providing a growing impetus to get our state universities under control. Not all Republicans are unified about which government approach is best suited to eliminate DEI. In Oklahoma, Republican Governor Kevin Sitt signed an executive order in December 2023, barring state agencies and universities from spending money on the programs. Stanridge said it's not clear what authority the order would have because Oklahoma's universities are regulated by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education not the governor's office. Quote, I appreciate the executive order, but arguably it really doesn't have the authority to force the schools to do anything. I ran several bills thinking maybe the moderates that are in control of the Senate would allow us to do something against DEI. 
For Washington State Senator Marco Lias, DEI is crucial to serving a diverse society. Lias introduced a bill in the Democratic-controlled legislature in 2023 to weave DEI concepts into the state's K-12 learning standards. So you want to make sure you're teaching discrimination to kindergartners and first graders. That is horrendous. But of course, not just them, throughout all of the public schools, but starting in kindergarten. The bill, which is up for consideration again in 2024, is designed to meet the needs of a diversifying student population, he said. Well, when I think the opposition is organized around a political agenda, whereas I'm trying to respond to a diverse community that I represent and the experience that they're bringing to me, Leah said. So it's sort of reality versus theory, what's happening in our families and schools versus an agenda driven by national foundations. That's the divide. People should not think that they should be treated differently because of their skin color or their gender or their sexual preference. And that is what this legislator should be telling his constituents. It's absolutely outrageous. Republican-led Florida and Texas were the first states to adopt broad-based laws banning DEI efforts in higher education. Since then, other leaders have followed. Well, the idea to study how much we were spending on DEI came from me seeing what other states were doing. Specifically, Ron DeSantis in Florida, said Mississippi State author Shad White, a Republican. In a 2023 report, White said Mississippi's public universities are spending millions on DEI programs instead of student scholarships. In the opening weeks of Mississippi's 2024 session, Representative Becky Curie introduced a bill that would implement sweeping bans not only on DEI offices, but also on funding campus activities deemed social activism. The bill has been referred to a House committee. Utah Governor Spencer Cox signed a bill into law on January 30th that makes the state the latest to prohibit diversity training, hiring, and inclusion programs at universities and in state government. Cox has called on using diversity statements in hiring bordering on evil. And the reason Cox is doing that and the reason that he's calling it bordering on evil is because you are not allowed to even apply for a job without making a diversity statement praising DEI, praising the racism and the discrimination. You would not be considered for a job in offices that require that. So why should they be doing that in colleges? And why should they be doing that in state government offices? It's absolutely bordering on evil, if not just straight out evil. Republican legislators in Wisconsin brokered a narrowly approved deal with Regents in December for the state's public university system to limit diversity positions at its two dozen campuses. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss later said he had only just begun to remove cancerous DEI practices and requested a review of diversity initiatives across state government. And the reason these politicians request review before they take action is because they need to get information and then act on that information, even though obviously all of this should be banned and all of it should not be allowed in especially any state-funded or federally-funded organizations. However, the legislators are not able to take action usually unless they get information first, which is why they request a review and it's a longer process, but it has to be a legitimate process or they won't be able to get their bills passed into laws. The crackdown on DEI is part of the same legislative project as the earlier movement to restrict the academic and legal ideas termed critical race theory, said Jonathan Butcher, a research fellow in education policy for the Heritage Foundation. Critical race theory is a way of thinking about America's history based on the idea that racism is systemic in the nation's institutions. Quote, there is no separation. DEI is the application of critical race theory. DEI officers are the administrative control panels that are putting critical race theory into practice, Butcher said. Representative Fentries Driscoll, Florida's Democratic House Minority Leader, thinks the ideological motive behind restricting DEI is intertwined with an economic agenda that downplays the role of identity in exacerbating inequality. Well, it's a flashpoint because the conservatives like to talk about meritocracy as their vision for a society where everybody can advance. Driscoll said, real life is actually more complicated than that. And that is what DEI programs are there to solve. No, you can't have discrimination for opportunity, for resources, for scholarships, for programs, for hiring. You can't have discrimination based on skin color, gender, or sexual preferences. You can't do that. There's no way to make equality for that. If we nationally institute policies that are discriminatory against certain races, and they're not based on meritocracy, instead of allowing discrimination to happen naturally based on meritocracy, which is, if you ain't good enough, you ain't getting in, where are the professionals of the future going to come from? Professionals need to be able to handle professional demands that are placed on them 
whether it's in classrooms or in work environments. If you can't handle the work, you can't do the job. We see what's happening at Boeing, and I have no idea what's going on at Boeing. It's very mysterious, but as an example, do you want to have airplanes falling out of the sky? Do you want to have doctors that can't do the job? Do you want to have a lawyer that has no idea how to properly represent your interests? Of course you don't want those things, but that's what's going to happen if we eliminate meritocracy. We're going to completely destroy society. And Kentucky is going hardcore. From Yahoo News, GOP Kentucky House votes to defund diversity, equity, and inclusion offices at public universities. The Kentucky House voted Friday to choke off funding for diversity, equity, and inclusion offices at public universities following an impassioned debate that had a GOP lawmaker dismissing DEI efforts as a failure and Democrats defending them as pillars of support for students from underrepresented groups. The overhaul bill passed the House by a vote of 68 to 18, sending it back to the Senate, which passed a much different version. House members stripped away the Senate's language and inserted a replacement that takes an even tougher stand on DEI initiatives at public university campuses. The Senate will decide in coming days whether to accept the new version. The GOP has supermajorities in both chambers, which means they should be able to pass this. The effort to roll back DEI initiatives in Kentucky is part of a much broader Republican campaign featuring bills in several states that would restrict such initiatives or require their public disclosure. In Kentucky, the House passed version would ban race-based scholarships and defund DEI offices and staff positions. So scholarships allowed based on race, funded by public money, how could you do a thing like that? Well, they're doing it, and now they're trying to stop doing it. It would prohibit the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education, which oversees public universities, from approving degrees that require courses containing discriminatory concepts. And it would hold public universities accountable to dismantle the misguided DEI bureaucracies, said Republican State Representative Jennifer Decker, who shepherded the new version to House passage. Quote, this bill would put an end to the failed, expensive, and discriminatory DEI initiatives at our public post-secondary schools in Kentucky, Decker said at the outset of the hours-long debate. While she insisted the bill would foster a culture that's inclusive and welcoming to all, Democrats said it would hurt minority students on campuses. That includes racial minorities and LGBT students, but also could be people who are disabled from rural areas and from low-income families. When they know they're losing the argument, they love to mention disabled people. This will not harm disabled people in any which way. What the people who are pushing DEI are trying to do is they're trying to treat people that they represent, their inclusive group that they say are diverse or whatever they're calling them these days, as disabled. They want them to be treated as if they have special needs. There are people that do have special needs. Those are disabled people. Usually those people were born that way, but not always. People might have an accident or have an injury in life or something that prevents them from being able-bodied. Those people are disabled and they do need extra help and they should be given that extra help. But these Democrats that claim it hurts minority students and insist that they be treated as if they're disabled people are wrong. People are not by definition disabled because of their skin color, their gender, or their sexual preferences. It's just wrong. Quote, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs are about creating and sustaining environments that support students and faculty who have been traditionally underrepresented on our college campuses that make them feel safe and welcome, said Democratic Rep. Nima Kulkarni. The sweeping bill also threatens to stifle concepts that professors can teach, opponents said. Quote, it would disallow the teaching of how oppressive governments create systems of inequality through laws and policies that are structured to marginalize minority groups. Our students deserve to know our history. They deserve to fully explore all the progress that we have made. Now they talk about progress. They don't want to talk about progress. They want to say, well, there isn't progress. This is the same as it used to be a hundred years ago. You need to revolt. You need to attack the oppressors. That's what this Marxism stuff is all about. Democrats threaten the backlash to the anti-DEI bill could include economic boycotts, students leaving the state for college, and perhaps hurt efforts by Kentucky's university to recruit black student athletes. Always with the threats, these guys. In condemning the bill, Democrat State Representative Sherilyn Stevenson warned that it sends the message to prospective recruits that, quote, we don't want you to learn about your heritage, but we're sure going to use your athletic abilities to further our institutions. In a recent letter to the NCAA's president, the NAACP said black student athletes should reconsider attending public colleges and universities in Florida. 
The letter was in response to the University of Florida and other state schools that have eliminated their diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. They haven't eliminated those programs whatsoever. What they've done is said, we're not going to fund that with state or federal money. You can fund it yourself, but we're not going to fund it. So the programs were eliminated because nobody who is wealthy wants to step up and fund those programs. And not only that, nobody's even promoting trying to raise money to fund these programs in universities in Florida. Wealthy people will complain about it, but they won't put up their own money to support the programs. It was also addressed to current and prospective student athletes. Quote, this is not about politics, the letter read. It's about the protection of our community, the progression of our culture, and most of all, it's about your education and your future. The U.S. Supreme Court's decision ending affirmative action at universities has created a new legal landscape around diversity programs in the workplace and civil society. Yeah, they're illegal, so they need to stop, and they're being stopped. Kentucky State Representative Tina Bojanowski, a Democrat, said these bills pose a threat. Quote, the threat from authoritarians who use phrases like evil DEI, bureaucracy, and indoctrination to limit academic freedom while imposing their worldview upon institutions of higher education cannot be overstated, she said. A cornerstone of democratic societies is the survival of the institution of higher education, free from political interference and the ideological agenda of autocrats. Well, that's what you guys have been pushing. And now finally, there's pushback. GOP states are doing the right thing. They are pushing back hard on DEI initiatives in colleges, but also in other state offices. It's just a matter of time before all of these discriminatory programs that are absolutely ridiculous are removed from society. There have been big wins in multiple states. Now we just need to see this spread further and further throughout the country so these people are embarrassed to demand discriminatory things. Everyone deserves a chance. People don't deserve to be treated differently based on their skin color, gender, or sexual preferences. People are disabled, and they do need to get help when they're legitimately disabled. But the able-bodied need to get up on their own, fight their way, and win in society the way we've always done it in America. That's what equality of opportunity is all about. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.